Hello everyone and welcome back to readings from the Imperial Library. Today we'll be reading a piece of extended, arguably non-canon lore by the legendary Michael Kirkbride. This piece introduced us to the concept of zero summing back when it was first released and if you're not too familiar with the topic, don't worry, I'll go into more detail about it at the end of the video. Etada, Eight Adra, Eat the Dreamer Author, Michael Kirkbride Transcribed from a spore dream of an unidentified, evaporated moth priest that reached zero sum. The Adroth Aka, who goes by so many names as to perhaps already suggest what I'm about to commit to Mimaspore, is completely insane. His mind broke when his perch from eternity allowed the day, and we of all the Arubis live on through its fragments, ensnared in the temporal writings and erasures of the accusal whim that he begat by saying, I am and the etheric thunder of self-applause that followed nay rippled until convention that is amnesia, it is any wonder that the time god would hate the same twin on the other end of the arubical cord, the space god, that any creation would become so utterly dangerous because of that singular fear of a singular word's addition, I am not. That all the interplay is one flea of assertion on a wolf of naught, and that every experience, that is, everything, born from that primal whale would cascade onto the echo need of hologram, each slice the same except for scale, and all the magic that would need to spring forth just to hold it together at living, divine cross-purpose support struts made from the need to exist exile along its two-headed fighting rays, each refusing their origin point, that is, tower. Terra Stones versus Chronocules, and in the end, an end that ever refuses to old, it all becomes lobotomized, for what is not lobial if not dracorography made flesh, reptilian coiled, and massive map god holding a compass, holding a timepiece, drooling, the water from which we dragged ourselves out to say, mirror-like, autotonic, automatic, we are two, on his countless knees, dementia given dimension, Dimension, Dementia. At this point, all transcription becomes impossible except by way of sheet music, an orchestration of which was attempted during the reign of Nimunet, who, along with everyone else in the symphony's radial madness, was vaporized by Agentia, the requisite anti-chimic holding tendrils activated, preventing imperial collapse. Impostathemosi, the Amulet of Kings granted to the Cocoon Council that the Spore Dream Etada Eight Adra Eat the Dreamer be immediately stored in the 1008 Cyrodelic Weapons of Rapture. End of text. I am almost positive I mispronounced some of that towards the end, but considering that all the words I mispronounced are most likely just made up words, I think I did a good enough job. So since this text is such a unique one, so unique that people might not get it, I thought I'd provide a section dedicated to trying to decipher it for you. First of all, the title in and of itself is what I assume to be a reference to the idea of the Eight Divines possibly trying to either usurp or take advantage of the Godhead, who is referred to as the Dreamer as he is the being that dreams up reality. On the other hand, the term Dreamer could be referring to Lorcan, who is the being who dreamt up Mundus and rallied the Atana to create it, only for them to turn on him and become the realm's new chief gods, besides the Daedra. I'm leaning towards the latter because the text seems to be trying to describe how Akatosh and Ariel hated Lorcan because he feared him. It is any wonder that the Time God would hate the same twin on the other end of the Arubical Cord, the Space God that any creation would become so utterly dangerous because of that singular fear of a singular word's addition, I am not. For those who don't know, the Space God is in reference to Lorcan, who is considered the opposite twin of Akatosh. For context, the opposite of time is space, so while Akatosh is the Time God, Lorcan is the Space God, and this text goes on to say that Akatosh, or Ariel, hated his twin because he questioned the universe and their place in it, whereas Agatosh did not. I also want to point out that in The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, Mankar Cameron does make reference to the idea that the Divines weren't as good as legends and religion make them out to be. For reference, here is a snippet of his speech from the ending of The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. Ask yourself, how is it that mighty gods die, yet the Daedra stand incorruptible? 
How is it that the Daedra forthrightly proclaim themselves to man while the gods cower behind statues and the faithless words of traitor priests? It is simple. They are not gods at all. The truth has been in front of you since you first were born. The Daedra are the true gods of this universe. Julianos, Dibella, and Stondar are all Lorcan's betrayers, posing as divinities in the principality that has lost its guiding light. It is Tamriel, the realm of change, brother to madness, sister to deceit. Your false gods could not entirely rewrite history. Thus you remember tales of Lorcan vilified, a dead trickster whose heart came to Tamriel. But if a god can die, how does his heart survive? The gods you worship are trifling shadows of first causes. They have tricked you for ages. Why do you think your world has always been contested ground, the arena of powers and immortals? This heart is the heart of the world, for one was made to satisfy the other. You all remember this. It is in every legend. Daedra cannot die, so your so-called gods cannot erase him from your minds completely. Now as for the concept of zero summing, it all comes down to what this moth priest discovered and that is the truth or divine truth of the universe. In the Elder Scrolls, when one discovers that the universe that they reside in is a dream and that they aren't actually real, they either achieve Chim, which is them saying that they do exist separately despite evidence to the contrary, or they disappear as this moth priest did and zero sum, becoming one with the dreamer. So when this moth priest discovered the truth and disappeared, why was only half of his message able to be deciphered while the rest could only be read as sheet music? Well it all comes down to the content of that message. In the first half it was only stated that Akatosh and Lorcan were opposites and that Akatosh hated Lorcan. This isn't really news to us or the residents of the Elder Scrolls universe by any means, but the info that followed it is the reason the Moth Priest Zero summed. So that is to say the sheet music holds the truth that the Elder Scrolls universe is just a dream, and by playing that music the listeners decipher the truth and zero sum themselves, which is why the Empire stored the music in its 1008 Cyrodiilic Weapons of Rapture, as the texts call it. Now my last question is why sheet music? Well, there is no exact answer for that, but there is a concept that we can look to for an idea of why. If we know about tonal architecture, then you know that the reality of the Elder Scrolls can be seen as a song. I believe this concept to be why sheet music is the only way a person can be remembered or referred to after zero summing, but that's just a small theory of mine. And I believe that's where I'm going to wrap everything up for today. I really wanted to put out something simple just because I'm working extra hard on a big video right now that became just it became something much bigger than I thought it would be initially. So this is just to show I'm still alive and indeed working on stuff plus I'm reading a lot of books and this was definitely an interesting one I thought I could read for you all and you know maybe break it down for people who just didn't quite understand it. Thank you so much for listening this has been readings from the imperial library i am your host infinity and i hope you all have an awesome day night or evening wherever and whenever you're at take it easy guys and i'll see you all in the next one <laughs>